हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट बायो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन डिटॉक्सिफिकेशन एंड मेटाबॉलिज्म ऑफ सीनोबायोटिक्स दिस बायो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इट मींस इट्स अ बायोकेमिकल प्रोसेस इन व्हिच वन केमिकल इज कन्वर्टेड टू अनदर केमिकल वन केमिकल इट इज कन्वर्टेड टू another chemical this second chemical may be toxic non toxic or less toxic toxic non toxic or less toxic that is bio transformation this bio transformation includes detoxification and intoxication detoxification and intoxication so let's discuss about this detoxification this uh, detoxification means all biochemical changes proceeding in the body which convert foreign molecules generally toxic generally toxic molecules to non toxic or less toxic and more soluble forms more soluble forms so detoxification means all biochemical changes that is producing proceeding in the body which convert foreign molecules usually toxic substances which is converted to non toxic or less toxic or more soluble forms so that they can be easily excreted these foreign molecules may be exogenous or endogenous exogenous or endogenous this exogenous include the substances which are not ingested in the, ingested or utilized by the organism exogenous means the substances which are not ingested or utilized by the organism this may enter the body through food then uh, or in the form of certain medicines or drugs which are administered to the body that is exogenous substances endogenous means they may be produced in the body by synthesis or as a as metabolites of various processes in the body as metabolites of various processes in the body so that is about detoxification so this bio transformation it includes detoxification and intoxication so this intoxication means conversion of a toxic compound into a more toxic one toxic to more toxic for example methanol it is converted to formic acid that is intoxic intoxication so coming to this uh, detoxification here this foreign molecules which enter the body these are these are known as xenobiotics these are xenobiotics this xenobiotics may be drugs then food additives then uh, pollutants then comes carcinogens then cosmetics then environmental pollutants uh, that is pollutants then pesticides then comes uh, histamine putrescin then cadaverin 
then uh, tyramine, tryptamine, etc. This histamine, cadaverin, putrescine, tri tyramine, tryptamine, these compounds are produced by the bacterial action in our body. So, these are the xenobiotics. This metabolism of xenobiotics included in biotransformation. Metabolism of xenobiotics includes two phases phase 1 and phase 2. It includes phase 1 and phase 2. The, in phase 1, the toxic compounds are converted to toxic compounds which are converted to non-toxic and water soluble forms. Water soluble forms. Some requires phase 1 and phase 2 to be converted to some requires this phase 1 and then phase 2 to be converted to this non-toxic water soluble forms. So, coming to the mechanism of detoxification or this mechanism of xenobiotics, detoxification or detoxication, it is mainly carried out in liver and then in kidneys, mainly in liver and then in kidneys. So, in phase 1, the toxic compounds are converted to non-toxic water soluble forms. Then in phase 2, the hydroxylated or other compounds which is produced which are produced in the phase 1 are converted by specific enzymes to water soluble polar metabolites. Water soluble polar metabolites. So, in phase 2, the hydroxylated or other compounds produced in phase 1 are converted by specific enzymes to water soluble polar metabolites. This is by conjugation with uh, various conjugating agents such as glucuronic acid, active sulfate, methylation, then methylation, and by acetylation, etc. The overall pro purpose of these uh, two phases that is phase 1 and phase 2 is to increase their water solubility and thus facilitate their excretion from the body. That is the overall purpose to increase their water solubility and thus facilitate their excretion from the body. So, as we know that uh, phase 1 and phase 2, today we will discuss about phase 1. This phase 1 includes oxidation or hydroxylation, then reduction and hydrolysis. Phase 1 includes oxidation or hydroxylation, reduction and hydrolysis. So, coming to oxidation, that is the first reaction, oxidation or hydroxylation. A large number of foreign substances are destroyed in the body by this oxidation. For oxidation, the, an important enzyme is required, that is known as cytochrome P450. Another name of this cytochrome P450 is mixed function oxidase. Mixed function oxidase. It is a mono oxygenase. It is a mono oxygenase. It requires NADPH as a coenzyme for its action. It is located in the microsomes of liver. This P450, this 450 means it has maximum absorbance at 450 nanometer when exposed to carbon monoxide. It has a minimum, it has a maximum absorbance at 450 nanometer when exposed to carbon monoxide. That is about cytochrome P450. 
So, a large number of uh, foreign substances are destroyed in the body by oxidation. For example, aliphatic and aromatic alcohols, these may be oxidized to acids through aldehyde formation. Then certain amines, anilates and drugs can also undergo oxidation. So, let us see some examples. First one is uh, primary aliphatic and aromatic alcohols. Aliphatic and aromatic alcohols. This primary aliphatic and aromatic alcohols are oxidized to corresponding acids. For example, methanol. Methanol is converted to formic acid. Methanol to formic acid. Then comes ethanol. Ethanol forms acetic acid. Then benzyl alcohol. It is converted to benzoic acid. So, primary aliphatic and aromatic alcohols, these are converted to or oxidized to corresponding acids. Then second is example is aromatic hydrocarbons. Aromatic hydrocarbons. Aromatic hydrocarbons are oxidized to phenol and other phenolic compounds. To phenol and other phenolic compounds. For example, benzene. It is converted to phenol, then to catechol. That is about aromatic hydrocarbons. Next example is aldehydes. Aldehydes are oxidized to corresponding acids. For example, benzaldehyde. It is converted to benzoic acid. Then, then comes anilates. Next example is anilates. These anilates are oxidized to corresponding phenols. For example, acetanilide. Acetanilide. It is present as a constituent of analgesic drugs. It is oxidized to form para-acetyl aminophenol. Para-acetyl aminophenol. Another example of oxidation is amines. Many primary aliphatic amines undergo oxidation to corresponding acids. For example, benzylamine. Benzylamine, it is oxidized to form benzoic acid. And the nitrogen in benzylamine, it is converted to urea. That is another example. Then, aromatic amines like... Uh, this aniline. Aniline is oxidized to corresponding phenol. That is para amino phenol. Para amino phenol. Then uh, certain drugs can be oxidized in the body and are excreted as hydroxy derivative or salts. For example, meprobamate. Meprobamate. This meprobamate is a tranquilizer. It is used in psychiatric disorders. It is excreted as oxidation product. That is uh, hydroxy meprobamate. It is oxidized to hydroxy meprobamate. Then chloral. Next example is chloral. This chloral is used as a hypnotic. It can be partly oxidized to form 
trichloroacetic acid. Partly it is oxidized to trichloroacetic acid. So these are the examples of oxidation or hydroxylation. Next we will see second reaction that is reduction. Second reaction is reduction. Reduction usually does not occur extensively. Some, uh, some examples of this reduction include certain aldehydes. For example, chloral. The, so this chloral undergo partial oxidation and forms trichloroacetic acid. Then uh, by reduction it forms trichloroethanol trichloroethanol then aromatic nitro compounds aromatic nitro compounds for example nitrophenol nitrophenol undergo reduction and it forms aminophenol aminophenol these are examples of reduction. Then, then comes uh, certain reduced metabolites. These are, this may be more toxic. So, uh, for example, picric acid to picramic acid. Picric to picramic acid. These are the examples of reduction. Coming to third reaction that is hydrolysis. A number of therapeutic compounds used as drugs, these undergo hydrolysis usually in liver. So hydrolysis usually in liver. For example, aspirin that is known as acetyl salicylic acid. Acetyl salicylic acid. It undergo hydrolysis and it forms salicylic acid plus acetic acid salicylic acid plus acetic acid then comes atropin atropin it forms tropin and tropic acid tropic acid plus tropin then uh, comes procaine this procaine undergo hydrolysis and it forms para amino benzoic acid para amino benzoic acid that is PABA plus diethyl amino ethanol diethyl amino ethanol procaine under the hydrolysis and forms para amino benzyl benzoic acid para amino benzoic acid and diethyl amino ethanol then comes digitalis digitalis means it is a cardiac glycoside it undergo hydrolysis and forms sugar plus a glycone so these are the examples of hydrolysis so this is about the phase one of this detoxification so this is about today's topic thank you for watching